Welcome to year three of the Preschool SLP podcast. And before we begin, I just want to thank you. Thank you so much for being at my side and for growing with me every week, for taking the very latest research and immediately finding out how we can put this into practice and how we can change lives. I appreciate it so much. Together, we are better. And frankly, my interest in research and putting it into practice, it's kind of a little strange, <laughs> my passion for it. And it means so much to be around people that are just as passionate as I am. And you obviously are to be listening to a preschool SLP podcast in your free time. Your kiddos are so fortunate for you and your passion for the work you do. So they are so lucky and I am so lucky as well. So let's dive into the R. So if you see me on the YouTube set, I'm showing you how I cue the R sound. And I cue it as the angry dog teeth, which or the hungry dog teeth, which is showing my teeth. And it's also making the R sound. So that is how I cue the R and I take out my hands and because of entrainment, I go up and down with my fingers nice and tight, just like the tongue is constricted up there near the roof of the mouth. Rrr. So let's talk about the research first before we dive into the three clusters I use to help establish correct production of R. Before we begin, let's look at this great research article. Now, if you work with adolescent age children or older elementary children, I think you should really check out this article and probably even read it cover to cover. The article is from October 2020, and it's LSHSS, one of ASHA's journals. And it's Jonathan Preston and his colleagues. It's entitled Tutorial Motor-Based Treatment Strategies for R Distortions. Now, what I like about this article is two things. The first thing I like about this article is when you get to the second page, they have a wonderful research review on why we must address the R and why we must address the R early on. So I'm talking preschool age. And why is that? And it says here that 25%, it's estimated, of children with speech sound disorders at the preschool level continue to have R distortions between the ages of nine to 12 years. So what we wanna do is we wanna prevent that habituation of an R distortion by early on intervening. So I work with the R at the preschool level and I focus on the R at the preschool level. And in my district, I can tell you from feedback from the elementary age speech pathologists, they're not seeing R challenges at the elementary age children of children I've worked with at the preschool level. And so I encourage you, knowing from this longitudinal research, you do kind of have a crystal ball that a quarter of the preschoolers with speech sound disorders will continue to struggle with the R between the ages of nine to 12 years. And at that time, it's gonna be very habituated because R is such a frequently occurring sound, sort of like S. S is another one that habituates those S distortions. And a lot of that has to do with the, how frequent the sound is in the English language. So if you're playing Wheel of Fortune, you're gonna pick R and S right? It'd be silly not to. These are highly frequent sounds, and as a result, they become very difficult to change later on. So R and S distortions are what you're going to see adults struggle with through adult age. They become that strongly habituated. So for that, I like to tackle it at the preschool level, and I have found success in doing so. I have prevented this habituation that occurs with the R if it goes untreated for too long. When you get to the last page, then we have the conclusions about the R. There's in the final paragraph read under conclusions, you're going to find three generalizations that they state about how to produce R. Well, before I state these three generalizations, I'm just going to say there's a lot of variability with how we produce R. What matters is 
what comes out at the end. So there's a lot of different ways to make that R sound. And the research indicates there's 32 different variations. So when I saw Jonathan Preston present at ASHA a few years ago, he was talking about how some children produce the R with a taco tongue, in which they're rolling the tongue goes up the corners of the mouth to get that R sound. Of course, you have the classic bunch dar in which the child's pulling back the r the tongue like a mountain on the roof of the mouth to produce the r then there's something known as the retroflex r in which the tongue tip is curling up in order to produce the r sound the tip of the tongue is curling up and back so there those, those are only two variations of r's but there's 32 variations of R's. But what are the generalizations of R? So let's think about that before we go into today's episode in which clusters we want to select that are going to help the child produce that R sound. So three generalizations we can make is first, when it comes to the lips. The lips are slightly retracted, which results in some constriction of airflow. So we want to think about context or sounds that in which the lips are slightly retracted or retracted to help with the R production. So what about the tongue? So two generalizations that they share here is one, the tongue is slightly retracted, pulled back. And two, the front of the tongue is slightly elevated. So thinking about that, we're going to want to think about what sounds we could surround the R with that pull the tongue back and elevate the tongue. So today I'm going to share with you my three favorite clusters, and I like to work on all three of these clusters at the preschool level that help the child produce the R. Now, the reason I like to work on a variety of clusters is because the R is produced in many different ways depending on the surrounding sounds. So we'll talk about that in the end. It's kind of like a muscle. You want to hit the muscle from multiple directions to well develop it. And because R is such a complex sound that changes depending on the surrounding sounds, I like to work on different contexts in order to kind of have a spider web effect and target the R from many different angles. So let's talk about first my absolute favorite hands down way to work on the R. And that is in my favorite blend of all, the most effective blend of all, the most complex blend in the English language. And if you listen to this podcast, you know what this blend is. It is, drum roll please, the SKR blends. So why do I like to work on R and the SKR blends? Because you have the S sound. and the S sound, the lips are retracted. Many of my preschoolers round those lips. I want into a W for an R. Instead, I want to see those lips retracted. So at the S, we have the lips retracted. Then we have the K. Again, the lips are retracted, but not only the lips retracted, because of the K sound, what else is happening? The tongue is retracted back and it's elevated. Remember we talked about when we produce the R, what do we wanna see? Retracted lips, we wanna see the tongue elevated and we wanna see it retracted. That's why I love working on SKR because the S and K help me out. Those are helping sounds. And it's called progressive assimilation in which these sounds before it are impacting the sounds that come after it. They're progressing forward onto that R. So that is my favorite blend to work on, not only because it's the most powerful, but also because it's the most helpful in getting the R. So even though I work at the preschool level, Elementary age colleagues in my CIS membership, they tell me, oh my goodness, I'm working on this SKR sound with this fifth grader that I've been seeing for speech therapy all through elementary age. And finally, just like that, he has the R sound. It's because of a cascading impact by working on R at a much higher level, at a three element cluster level, there's quick generalization and they're getting it in that manner. They've been amazed at how quickly these children are getting the R because they're putting it in an SKR blend. So let's look at my number two favorite cluster to establish an R sound. And that is the African blends DR, Dr and TR 
tra. Okay. So a lot of people, when they look at DR and TR, they mispronounce them. They'll say, they look at the TR and they'll say tra. No, no, no. It's train. When we say the TR blend in our language, it's a ch affricate R, trr. So why do I like working on affricate R blends, TR and DR? And once again, here we're talking about a constriction. The lips are slightly retracted and you're constricting the airflow with the lips because you're protruding them forward. That means you're not rounding them. Secondly, we have retraction of the tongue. Because you're moving the alveolar to a palatal when you produce it, we're getting that tongue retracted back to the pellet. So it's helping in producing that R song and getting that tongue in position. And thirdly, there's elevation of the tongue tip to produce the ch and the j. So I like to work on the R and TR and DR blends, which are affricate blends. These are not stop blends. We do not produce them as stop sounds. We produce them as affricates when they're in that blend. So we have the SKR. That's number one. That's the most powerful treatment target. It's three, out, three element clusters always be two element clusters. That's always what's preferred. Number three. This one, the children taught me because I was doing the speech test and I was finding they were getting FR blends before other blends. So what is it about FR blends? The third one is FR blends. Well, with the labial dental F, you are not rounding your lips. It's impossible to say an F with rounded lips. You can't say, so try to say four with a rounded lip. No one says war. It's just impossible. So they're biting their lip so they're already not rounding the lips. It prevents that. Now, as far as the tongue retraction and elevation is concerned, it's not as good as the affricate. It's definitely not as good as the SKR, which I consider the best blend to work at. But it gives you something. It gives you incompatible lips, and it makes it difficult to round your lips into that W sound. So I like FR blends as my third treatment target for establishing R. So what do I do? I work on all three. And the reason I work on all three blends is because R is so complex and you produce the R in different ways depending on the context. So if you look in a mirror and you say these three blends, I'm gonna put them in the verb form because I use them as verbs to request access to activities or objects. If you look in the mirror, you're going to see scrape. You're going to see a real labial retracted R, like a big smile, scrape. Then if you say the African, you say the word, for instance, drop, you're going to see a very different R. You're going to see the lips protruded forward, very different. And then if you say free, another one I like to use, you're going to see a very different R with your mouth. So these are three very distinct R's. I'm working at different angles, like a spider web. So I like to work on all three R's and use all three as treatment targets for it to have different variability, knowing that R is produced in many different manners and there's 32 different allophones, so different variations of the R that all sound like R. So that is where we're headed. Now, how do I get that R sound? Sometimes I need to slow it down and I need to insert the R, okay? So I need to give the child time to get that placement correct. So I'm gonna show you what that looks like. If we're saying, for instance, scrape, it looks like this. Snakes on do you think others Okay, so I added the er sound to get that positioning correct, to get those lips retracted, to get that tongue elevated and pulled back, to get a really nice, strong sound uh, emerge that sounds like angry dog teeth or hungry dog teeth. Skrrr. So I'm giving time for the child to get the accurate placement and the manner down. So it's the same thing with the others as well. So if I'm saying it's the same thing, I'll do something like this. So 
So I add that er in there to give them time to get accurate, accurate placement and manner going on before they produce it. Don't want them to say, do what? and then correct it. I want to prevent the W. I want to prevent that rounding of the lips. So by adding that er, it gives me time to get accurate placement before we produce it. So the same thing with free, I would do this. F, F, R, E. Okay, so those are how I would add the er to give the child time to give accurate placement and accurate manner. So those are the three clusters that really help establish the R sound. You're going to find if you do this in your intervention that they're not all equal. So I've compared these three clusters. An SKR, if you were to choose a target, is going to give you much more gains on untreated sounds than DR, the DR is, the African blend, or the FR, the FR. You're going to get greater sounds in the more challenging targets. So always go for three elements over two elements. So what do you do if the child can't produce R? Like you take out your toolbox, you empty it out, you use every tool you have, you use every cluster blend you have to help out, you go zero miles an hour, you're inserting the er, and it's still not working. Well, then I would go for a three element SK, yeah, such as skew it to me, please. Or I'd go for a three element SKW blend. It's spelled SQU. Could you squeeze it to me, please? Or I'd go for a three element SPL. Can you splash it to me, please? Now, once again, R blends, SPR is much more powerful than SPL. So you always want to select R over L because the more challenging the sound, the greater the gains. So all of that taken into consideration, what blend is the hardest of them all? So when we're talking about the blend that's the hardest of them all, this is the blend I like to use when it comes to generalization. I want the child to do acrobatics in the mouth and I want it to be the most challenging blend out there that is going to challenge their oral motor coordination to produce it. What do you think that blend is? It's SPR. And that's because when you're producing SPR, what happens are, a, your lips are rounded. B, your tongue is flat down and forward. So you have a flat, forward tongue and lowered lips. So you're going to be going from zero miles an hour to 100 miles an hour to produce that R within that cluster. So I save the SPR for generalization. I want you to take all of today's information on the R and roll up your sleeves and put it to use and change lives one child at a time, but you are always going to be first.